Thank you. I started my career in science and policy working for Chairman George Brown, who's in the red sweater to my left looking down on us at this committee 26 years ago. Uh, it's always a privilege to come back, and I know how hard the members and the staff work on all our behalf. My testimony focuses on how members of Congress can better support scientific integrity in climate research. Let me tell you a story. Several months after I testified before this committee in December 2013, the White House posted on its website a six-page essay by the President's science advisor, which claimed falsely that my testimony before this committee was not representative of mainstream views and was seriously misleading. Now, we've all come to learn that no good happens when the White House releases false information, and my case was no different. One year later, Congressman Raul Grijalva opened a formal investigation of me and six other professors, three of whom are testifying here today. In his letter to my university's president, Mr. Grijalva justified the investigation of me by relying on the science advisor's false claims. In his letter, he introduced another false implication, that I and the other academics had potential conflicts of interest and failures to disclose corporate funding sources. He cited ExxonMobil and the Koch Foundations as possible sources of undisclosed funding that I might have received. My university conducted the investigation. No surprise to me found I've never received any fossil fuel or Koch Foundation funding. In 2016, the University of Colorado's elected Board of Regents issued a unanimous bipartisan statement in support of me and academic freedom more generally. Despite being ultimately vindicated about the integrity of my research and my funding sources, as well as receiving the strong support of my university leadership, the investigation proved extremely harmful to my ability to work in the field of climate. Yet scientific evidence in support of the conclusions I presented to this committee in 2013 is stronger today. There's little scientific basis in support of claims that extreme weather events, and specifically hurricanes, floods, drought, and tornadoes, and their economic damage has increased in recent decades due to the emission of greenhouse gases. In fact, since 2013 when I last appeared here, the world and the United States have had a remarkable stretch of good fortune with respect to extreme weather as compared to the past. The lack of evidence to support claims of increasing frequency or intensity of hurricanes, floods, drought, or tornadoes on climate timescales is also supported by the most recent assessments of the IPCC and the broader peer-reviewed literature on which the IPCC is based. My experience as an inconvenient academic is not unique. Politicians, including elected officials in Congress, and enthusiastic advocates from both sides of the aisle have targeted climate researchers whose peer-reviewed research they do not like, including all four witnesses testifying here today. Such dynamics of delegitimization are not unique to the climate issue. Drawing on my experiences, my research, and that of the broader community focused on science advice, I offer several recommendations focused on how members of Congress can improve the state of science integrity in climate science. Policymakers and scientists have developed well-established processes for assessing the state of scientific knowledge on subjects of relevance. Such processes include federal advisory committees, those of the national academies, the assessments of the IPCC, and many others nationally and internationally. Such processes work best when they are populated by a diversity of experts, including those who may hold minority or even unpopular perspectives. Members of Congress have the standing and authority to call for such assessments to ensure through oversight that they are conducted with integrity and responsive to their information requests. In contrast, while the legislative process can be extremely effective in highlighting partisan differences on policy, it is not well suited to provide an accurate characterization of the state of scientific understandings. Sometimes debates over science serve as a proxy for debates about policy preferences or political orientation. When members of Congress and scientists participate in such proxy debates, it contributes to the pathological politicization of science. Oversight of the integrity of scientific assessments is an important and appropriate role from congressional committees. However, the investigation of individual researchers is not an appropriate role for Congress and is unlikely to contribute positively to the upholding of scientific integrity. A bipartisan truce ending such investigations of individual researchers should start immediately. Congress should support the role of scientific assessments in providing an accurate perspective on questions asked by policymakers. We have plenty of knowledge and experience about how to arrive at accurate representations of the state of scientific understandings on any topic. It's a choice whether or not to use that knowledge and experience. Thanks again for the opportunity to share.